gather around, young explorers, for a journey back in time to the age of the dinosaurs, the most amazing creatures that ever walked our earth. Dinosaurs were not just animals, they were the giants and rulers of our planet long, long ago. Imagine creatures so huge, some were as tall as buildings, while others were as long as several buses. Dinosaurs roamed our planet during a time called the Mesozoic Era, which is divided into three periods, the Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous. This era spanned over 160 million years, beginning about 230 million years ago, and ending around 65 million years ago. Dinosaurs came in all shapes and sizes. There were gigantic, long-necked herbivores like Brachiosaurus and Diplodocus, munching on the leaves of tall trees. Then there were fierce carnivores like the mighty Tyrannosaurus rex, with its massive teeth and powerful jaws, and the speedy Velociraptor, both hunting for their next meal. But not all dinosaurs were giants. Some were as small as chickens, darting around on their quick little feet. Each dinosaur had its unique traits, from the armored plates and spikes of Stegosaurus to the three horns of Triceratops. The world of dinosaurs was like a real-life adventure story, filled with a variety of landscapes from lush forests to dry deserts. These incredible creatures dominated the land, and their reign lasted millions of years, which is way longer than humans have been around. Dinosaurs eventually became extinct, which means they disappeared from Earth. Scientists believe a massive asteroid hitting Earth caused big changes in the climate, making it hard for dinosaurs to survive. Their disappearance is still one of the great mysteries of science. The story of dinosaurs doesn't end there, though. They left behind fossils, which are like natural time capsules. Scientists called paleontologists study these fossils to learn about the dinosaurs' lives, how they looked, how they lived, and even what they ate. Dinosaurs, the ancient giants of Earth, ignite our imagination and curiosity about the past. They remind us of a world very different from ours, a world full of wonders waiting to be discovered in the depths of time. Now we're about to embark on an epic journey back in time, way back to an extraordinary era known as the Mesozoic Era. This wasn't just any time in history, it was the age of dinosaurs. The Mesozoic Era is split into three amazing periods, each with its own unique set of dinosaurs and adventures. Let's explore each one. Triassic Period, The Dawn of Dinosaurs Imagine stepping into a world where dinosaurs are just starting to appear. It's like being at the opening scene of a great dinosaur movie. The Triassic Period is the first chapter in our dinosaur story, where the Earth was recovering from a massive extinction and new life began to bloom. Dinosaurs like the small, fierce Herrerasaurus, and the long-necked Platyosaurus began to roam the land. Picture a world of vast deserts and few large trees, with dinosaurs just beginning their journey to greatness. Jurassic Period, the giants walk the earth. Next, we zoom into the Jurassic Period, the golden age of giants. This was when some of the most famous dinosaurs, like the mighty Brachiosaurus and the ferocious Allosaurus, roamed the earth. Imagine forests filled with gigantic trees and lush greenery, with enormous dinosaurs towering above. The air buzzed with the flapping wings of pterosaurs, and the seas teemed with marine reptiles. It was a time of incredible growth and diversity among dinosaurs. Cretaceous Period, the last chapter of dinosaurs. Our final stop is the Cretaceous Period, the grand finale of the Mesozoic era. This was the time of the famous Tyrannosaurus rex and the clever Velociraptor. The world was filled with flowering plants, and dinosaurs had evolved into many different shapes and sizes. It was a vibrant and colorful world, but also the period that saw the end of the dinosaurs, marking a dramatic close to the Mesozoic era. Step into the world of the most legendary dinosaur of all time, the Tyrannosaurus rex, or T-rex for short. With its massive size, fearsome jaws, and powerful presence, T-rex is like the superstar of the dinosaur age, a true prehistoric celebrity. Imagine a creature so tall that it could look into a second-story window. That's T-Rex, one of the largest meat-eating dinosaurs that ever stomped on Earth. It stood up to 20 feet tall and was about 40 feet long as long as a school bus. The T-Rex was a powerful predator with strong, muscular legs that could carry its massive body as it prowled for its next meal. But the most awe-inspiring feature of the T-Rex was its enormous head and jaws, 
filled with huge, sharp teeth. Each tooth was like a giant banana, up to 12 inches long, perfect for chomping and ripping through its prey. Its bite was one of the most powerful of any dinosaur, strong enough to crush bones. Despite its giant size, T-Rex was probably pretty fast for its size, capable of running at speeds. Comparable to a fast-running human. This speed, combined with its powerful jaws, made T-Rex an apex predator, ruling over its territory like a king. But here's a fun fact, T-Rex's arms were really short, almost comically so, especially compared to the rest of its massive body. Scientists are still puzzled about what T-Rex used these tiny arms for. Maybe for holding prey, or perhaps they were just a remnant of its evolutionary past. The T-Rex lived around 68 to 66 million years ago, in what is now North America. It roamed the forests and river valleys, leaving its footprints and fossils for us to find millions of years later. The discovery of T-Rex fossils has excited scientists and dinosaur fans alike. Each new fossil find helps us piece together the story of this incredible creature, adding to the legend of the T-Rex. The Tyrannosaurus rex, with its towering height, fearsome teeth, and king-like status, captures our imagination and takes us back to a time when giants roamed the earth. It's a symbol of the mysterious and wonderful world of dinosaurs that once was. One of the most famous and remarkable dinosaurs ever to walk the earth, the Triceratops. Picture a massive, gentle giant, as long as a school bus and as heavy as a small truck, with three impressive horns and a giant frill. That's the mighty Triceratops for you, a true marvel of the dinosaur world. The name Triceratops means three-horned face, and it's easy to see why. This dinosaur had two large horns above its eyes and a smaller one on its nose. These weren't just for show, they were powerful tools for defense and perhaps even for impressing other Triceratops. Imagine the sight of two Triceratops locking horns, like ancient warriors in a majestic duel. But it's not just the horns that make Triceratops stand out. It also had a large bony frill at the back of its head. Scientists think this frill might have been used for protection, to regulate body temperature, or even as a way to show off to other Triceratops. This frill, decorated with patterns and possibly colors, made each Triceratops unique. Triceratops lived during the late Cretaceous period, about 68 to 66 million years ago, roaming the areas we now know as North America. It was one of the last dinosaur species to exist before the dinosaurs went extinct. Despite its fierce appearance, Triceratops was a herbivore, grazing on plants and trees. It had a beak and many cheek teeth, perfect for chopping down tough, fibrous vegetation. Imagine a Triceratops casually munching on leaves and plants, completely at ease in its ancient forest home. Triceratops fossils have been found with evidence of healed injuries, suggesting that they did indeed use their horns in battles, possibly with predators like the T-Rex, or with each other. The Triceratops, with its iconic horns and frill, is a symbol of the diverse and fascinating world of dinosaurs. It's a creature that continues to captivate our imagination and curiosity, taking us back. Imagine a creature from long, long ago, a cunning and swift hunter, the Velociraptor. These amazing dinosaurs lived millions of years ago, but they still capture our imagination today. Velociraptors were not as big as some of the giant dinosaurs, but what they lacked in size, they made up for in speed and smarts. With sharp, curved claws on their feet and quick, agile bodies, velociraptors were the ultimate predators of their time. They had a sleek, bird-like shape and were covered in feathers, much like the birds we see today. But don't let their size fool you these dinosaurs were fierce and clever. Velociraptors roamed in packs, working together to outsmart and catch their prey. They had strong, powerful legs that let them run very fast, and their long tails helped them keep balance while chasing after their next meal. It's fascinating to think about these incredible creatures, and how they lived so long ago. Even though they're extinct now, velociraptors continue to be one of the most exciting and intriguing dinosaurs we know about. They remind us of the amazing and mysterious world that existed before our time. The Brontosaurus This giant, gentle dinosaur is truly a wonder to behold. The Brontosaurus, which means thunder lizard, was one of the largest animals to ever roam our planet. Imagine a creature as long as two school buses end-to-end, -end, 
with a neck that could stretch as high as a three-story building. These gentle giants weighed as much as fifteen elephants and shook the ground as they walked. Despite their enormous size, Brontosaurus were peaceful plant eaters. They used their incredibly long necks to reach the tops of tall trees, munching on leaves and branches. They lived in herds, traveling together across the lush, green landscapes of the ancient earth, always on the lookout for their next leafy meal. Brontosaurus had huge, column-like legs to support their massive bodies and long, whip-like tails that could swing back and forth. Their tails could make a loud cracking sound, much like a whip, and it's fun to imagine the sounds echoing through the prehistoric forests. Children are often amazed by the sheer size and power of the Brontosaurus. These dinosaurs teach us about the incredible diversity of life on Earth and the wonders of the ancient world. The Brontosaurus is a reminder of how dynamic and ever-changing our planet has been throughout its history. This amazing creature was not just any dinosaur, it was like the superstar of the prehistoric world. Picture this, a dinosaur as long as a school bus, with a giant sail on its back and teeth as sharp as knives. That's the Spinosaurus for you. The Spinosaurus was unique because it loved water. Imagine a dinosaur that could swim. It was like the king of the river, hunting for fish and splashing around. This massive creature had a long, narrow skull, kind of like a crocodile, perfect for catching slippery fish. But the most eye-catching thing about the Spinosaurus was the huge sail on its back. Scientists think this sail was used to help it control its body temperature or to look extra impressive to other dinosaurs. Can you imagine seeing a dinosaur with a giant sail walking around? It must have been an amazing sight. The Spinosaurus lived in what is now North Africa, and it was one of the biggest meat-eating dinosaurs ever. It roamed around about 95 to 100 million years ago, during the Cretaceous period. That's way, way before humans were around. So, next time you're near water, think of the Spinosaurus. It was a real-life water-loving, fish-eating, sail-bearing giant that once ruled the ancient rivers. Isn't it incredible to learn about the amazing creatures that lived on our planet long ago? The Stegosaurus, a remarkable dinosaur known for its distinctive features, lived during the late Jurassic period. It's often recognized by its unique array of upright plates along its back and the four large spikes on its tail. These plates, while they may have been used for defense, are also thought to have played a role in temperature regulation or display. The Stegosaurus had a relatively small head with a beak-like mouth and small, leaf-shaped teeth, suited to its herbivorous diet. Despite its large size, measuring up to 30 feet long and weighing as much as 5,000 pounds, it had a relatively small brain. It walked on all fours with short front legs and longer rear legs, giving its body a slightly tilted posture. The Dilophosaurus was a unique and fascinating dinosaur that lived a long time ago during the early Jurassic period, around 193 million years ago. What made the Dilophosaurus really stand out were the two big, bony crests on its head. These crests were shaped kind of like half-moons, and were most likely used to impress other dinosaurs, not for fighting. This dinosaur was medium-sized, about the length of a car, and it walked on two legs. It was pretty quick and nimble, which would have been helpful for catching its food, because, just like a lion or a tiger, the Dilophosaurus was a carnivore, meaning it ate meat. The Dilophosaurus had a long, slender tail, strong back legs for running, and shorter front arms with claws. Its mouth was full of sharp teeth, perfect for eating other animals it might have hunted. In movies and TV shows, the Dilophosaurus is sometimes shown with some extra features, like spitting poison or having a frilly neck, but scientists haven't found evidence to prove that these were real. So it's important to remember that while these features make the Dilophosaurus look really cool on screen, they might not be what the dinosaur actually looked like in real life. Overall, the Dilophosaurus is remembered as a fast, agile dinosaur with a really distinctive look, thanks to those unique crests on its head. It's a dinosaur that continues to capture the imagination of kids and adults alike. Protoceratops was a small dinosaur that lived a long, long time ago, during what scientists call the Late Cretaceous Period. Imagine a creature that's a bit like a parrot and a turtle mixed together but much bigger. Protoceratops was about the size of a large sheep or a small pony. It had a beak like a parrot, 
which it probably used to munch on plants. One of the coolest things about Protoceratops was the large, fancy frill around its neck. This frill looked a bit like a fan or the ruffled collar on a fancy dress, and it might have helped Protoceratops look bigger to scare away other animals or to impress other Protoceratops. Even though it walked on four legs and was pretty sturdy, Protoceratops wasn't very big compared to other dinosaurs. It didn't have any horns like some of its relatives, but it was still a special and interesting dinosaur. Protoceratops lived in a place that was a lot like a desert, with not many trees and a lot of sand. Even though we can't see them alive today, scientists have found fossils, which are like very old, very hard copies of their bones, to learn about how they lived and what they looked like. So Protoceratops is a small but very fascinating dinosaur from a time long, long ago. The Amazing Pteranodon, a real-life creature from the age of the dinosaurs. Imagine this, high above the land of towering trees and vast oceans, the Pteranodon, a giant flying reptile, rules the skies. This isn't just any bird it's a prehistoric wonder with wings wider than a car. Picture it soaring, gliding, and swooping through the air. Its wings are like a superhero's cape, flapping in the wind. The Pteranodon doesn't have feathers like birds today, instead, it has a special skin that stretches across its massive wings. Now, think about its head. It's got a long, pointy beak perfect for catching fish. Just like a skilled fisherman, the Pteranodon dives down from the sky, scoops up fish from the ocean, and gobbles them up. Yum! And those eyes sharp as an eagle's, always on the lookout for a tasty meal. The Pteranodon lived a long, long time ago, way before humans were around, during a period called the Cretaceous. That's the same time as the famous T-Rex. But don't worry, the Pteranodon is more interested in fish than in us. Imagine being able to fly alongside the Pteranodon, high up in the sky, looking down at the world below. How exciting that would be! This magnificent creature shows us how diverse and wonderful life was on our planet millions of years ago. Just think the next time you look up at the sky, remember that once upon a time, the Pteranodon was there, soaring majestically above the Earth. Quetzalcoatlus was a really amazing and huge creature that lived a long, long time ago, during the time of the dinosaurs. It was named after a mythical creature called Quetzalcoatl, which was part bird and part snake. Now, imagine a bird but much, much bigger as tall as a giraffe. That's how big Quetzalcoatlus was. It wasn't actually a bird, but a type of flying reptile called a pterosaur. In fact, Quetzalcoatlus is one of the largest flying animals that ever lived. It had a wingspan, that's how far its wings would stretch out from one tip to the other, that was as long as a small airplane. Imagine that flying above you. Despite its huge size, Quetzalcoatlus was probably very good at flying. It could glide through the air, soaring like a giant kite. Quetzalcoatlus also had a long neck and a big, pointy beak. Scientists think it used its beak to catch fish, just like how some birds today catch fish from the water. But it also might have walked on land, using its wings like legs, to hunt for small animals or scavenge for food. It's really cool to think about how a creature as big as Quetzalcoatlus could fly in the sky, way back when dinosaurs roamed the earth. It's like something out of a storybook but it was real. Tapejara was a really fascinating creature from a long time ago, during the age of the dinosaurs. But unlike many dinosaurs, Tapejara wasn't walking on the land, it was soaring in the sky. Tapejara was a type of pterosaur, which is a group of flying reptiles that lived during the time of the dinosaurs. Now, let's imagine what Tapejara looked like. It had wings made of skin, like a bat, but it was much bigger. It could spread its wings wide and glide through the air. Tapejara wasn't as big as some of the giant pterosaurs, but it still had a pretty impressive wingspan, about the size of a small car. One of the coolest things about Tapejara was its head. It had a large crest on the top of its skull, which made it look really unique. This crest might have been used to help it steer while flying, or to show off and look fancy to other Tapejaras. Tapajara's beak was long and toothless, kind of like a bird's beak. Scientists think it used its beak to snatch up fish from the water or to grab fruits and other tasty things to eat. Even though Tapejara lived a very long time ago, scientists have learned a lot about it by studying fossils. 
Fossils are like nature's way of making a copy of something that lived a long time ago, and they help scientists figure out what these amazing creatures were like. So, Tate Jara was like a cool, flying reptile with a fancy head crest, who lived in the time of the dinosaurs, soaring through the sky and showing off its impressive wings. The Plesiosaurus This isn't just any sea creature, it's a marvel from a world long gone, when dinosaurs roamed the earth. Imagine a creature with a body as big as a small bus, swimming gracefully in the ancient seas. The Plesiosaurus is a sight to behold with its long, swan-like neck and a head that's small but full of sharp teeth perfect for catching its favorite snack, fish and squid. But what really stands out are its flippers. Imagine four powerful, paddle-like flippers propelling the Plesiosaurus through the water, making it an expert swimmer. It moves with elegance almost like it's flying underwater, dancing between the waves and the ancient sea creatures. This fantastic creature lived a very, very long time ago, in the age of dinosaurs, but it wasn't a dinosaur itself. It was a reptile that loved the ocean so much that it spent its entire life in the water. It didn't come onto land, not even to lay eggs. Now, think about this, the Plesiosaurus didn't have gills like fish, it breathed air just like us. So every now and then, it would swim up to the surface of the ocean, take a big gulp of air, and dive back into its watery world. The Plesiosaurus shows us how amazing and diverse life was in the oceans millions of years ago. Just imagine swimming alongside this gentle giant, watching it twist and turn with ease in the deep blue sea. What a magical sight that would have been in the time of the dinosaurs. So the next time you dip your toes into the ocean, think of the Plesiosaurus, the graceful giant of the ancient seas. All right, adventurous friends, let's plunge into the depths of our planet's ancient oceans to uncover the secrets of the mighty Megalodon, the biggest, baddest shark that ever lived. This isn't just any fish tale, it's a journey into the past to meet a true ocean titan. Picture this, a shark so enormous, it makes the great white shark look like a tiny goldfish in comparison. The Megalodon was not just big, it was gigantic. Imagine a shark as long as a school bus, with a mouth so wide it could swallow a car whole. Its teeth. Razor sharp and as big as your hand. Now, think about how this colossal creature ruled the seas. The megalodon was the ultimate predator, swimming through the ocean with such power and speed that no creature in the sea could escape its grasp. Its diet. It feasted on giant whales, squids, and even other sharks. Chomp, chomp. But here's something really cool, the megalodon didn't chew its food like we do. It would take massive bites with its powerful jaws and swallow huge chunks whole. Talk about a big appetite. The megalodon lived millions of years ago, long before humans were around. It's like the superstar of prehistoric sharks, a legend of the deep that has fascinated scientists and adventurers for years. Imagine diving into the ocean and seeing the shadow of the megalodon as it glides through the water, a true giant of the deep, king of its underwater kingdom. Its size and power show us just how incredible and diverse life in our oceans has been throughout Earth's history. So next time you're at the beach or watching the waves, think about the megalodon, the greatest shark that ever lived, swimming in those same oceans, ruling the ancient seas with its might and majesty. What an incredible adventure that would be. Elasmosaurus was a really cool and unusual creature that lived in the ocean a long, long time ago, during the age of the dinosaurs. Now, let's dive into what made Elasmosaurus so special. Imagine a creature with a body a bit like a sea turtle but much, much bigger. The most amazing thing about Elasmosaurus was its super long neck, it was one of the longest necks of all sea creatures. This neck wasn't just a little bit long, it was incredibly long, with more neck bones than any other animal we know about. Elasmosaurus used its long neck to help it catch food. It probably swam through the water and used its neck to sneak up and snatch fish and squid. Its long neck could dart in and out of schools of fish, catching them by surprise. Despite its big size, Elasmosaurus didn't have strong flippers for fast swimming. So it might have floated near the surface of the water, using its long neck to reach down and grab tasty snacks. Elasmosaurus was really big, about the length of a school bus. But don't worry, it ate fish, not people. Since Elasmosaurus lived in the ocean, it didn't come on land. 
It would come up to the surface to breathe air, though, because, like all reptiles, it couldn't breathe underwater. So, Elasmosaurus was a giant, long necked marine reptile that swam in the seas of the dinosaur age, and it's another example of the amazing and diverse creatures that have lived on our planet. Mosasaurus was an incredible ocean dwelling creature from a very long time ago, during the age of the dinosaurs. But guess what? Mosasaurus wasn't a dinosaur, it was a massive marine reptile, and it ruled the ancient seas. Picture a giant lizard, but much bigger than any lizard you've ever seen. Mosasaurus was enormous, about as long as a school bus. It had a long, streamlined body with four strong flippers, which helped it swim like a champion. Unlike fish, Mosasaurus was a reptile, so it had to come up to the surface to take breaths of air, just like whales and dolphins do today. One of the coolest things about Mosasaurus was its mouth full of sharp teeth. It was a fearsome predator that loved to feast on fish, squid, and other sea creatures. Imagine it as the top hunter of its time in the ocean, like a big, underwater king of the sea. Mosasaurus had a powerful tail that it used to swim fast and catch its prey. It was a real expert in the art of hunting underwater. Even though Mosasaurus lived millions of years ago, we know a lot about it because scientists have found its fossils. Fossils are like the ancient remains of these amazing creatures that help us learn about what they looked like and how they lived. So think of Mosasaurus as a supersized, underwater reptile that once ruled the oceans, making it one of the coolest sea creatures from the time of the dinosaurs. Ichthyosaurus was a really cool creature that lived in the ocean a super long time ago, around the same time as the dinosaurs. Its name means fish lizard, and that's a great clue to what it looked like. Imagine a dolphin mixed with a lizard. Ichthyosaurus had a sleek, streamlined body that was perfect for swimming fast in the water, just like dolphins do today. It had flippers instead of legs, which helped it zip through the water and catch its food. It also had a long, pointy snout filled with sharp teeth, great for snapping up fish and squid. Even though it looked a bit like a fish and lived in the water, Ichthyosaurus was actually a reptile. That means it breathed air and had to come up to the surface of the ocean to take breaths, just like dolphins and whales do now. One of the most amazing things about Ichthyosaurus is that, like some other marine reptiles, it gave birth to live babies in the water, rather than laying eggs. This is pretty unusual for a reptile. Ichthyosaurus could be pretty big, but not as huge as some of the other sea monsters of its time. Some were about as long as a small car. So think of Ichthyosaurus as a speedy, fish-eating, ocean-dwelling reptile that was an amazing swimmer and an important part of the prehistoric world. Tylosaurus was a super cool creature that lived a very long time ago, not on land with the dinosaurs, but in the deep, vast oceans. Imagine a giant, swimming lizard that's what Tylosaurus was like. Tylosaurus was a type of mosasaur, which were like the rulers of the sea during the time of the dinosaurs. They were not dinosaurs themselves, but they were reptiles, just like lizards and snakes we see today. Now picture this, Tylosaurus was huge, longer than a school bus. It had a long, streamlined body, perfect for swimming fast in the ocean. Its powerful tail helped it to zoom through the water, and it had flippers instead of legs. One of the coolest things about Tylosaurus was its head. It had a really big head with lots of sharp, scary teeth. It used these teeth to catch its food, like fish, squid, and even other sea reptiles. Tylosaurus was a top predator in the ocean, which means it was at the very top of the food chain. But Tylosaurus wasn't just a fierce hunter. It was also very interesting because of how it lived in the ocean. Unlike fish, it didn't have gills to breathe underwater. It had to come up to the surface to breathe air, just like whales and dolphins do today. So Tylosaurus was like a giant, swimming, lizard-like creature that ruled the ancient oceans. It's exciting to think about such an amazing animal swimming in the seas millions of years ago. Gather around, young dinosaur detectives, for an exciting journey back in time to meet one of the smallest and most fascinating dinosaurs ever, the Compsognathus. This little creature is a big deal in the world of dinosaurs, even though it was only about the size of a turkey. Picture this, a tiny, agile dinosaur darting through the underbrush of ancient forests, quick as lightning and just as sneaky. 
The Compsognathus, with its slender legs and long tail, was built for speed. It could run and weave through the trees, chasing after bugs and small lizards for its dinner. Imagine a little dinosaur, no bigger than your pet dog, zooming around looking for its next meal. The Compsognathus had a small head with sharp, pointy teeth perfect for snapping up its prey. And its eyes. Bright and alert, always on the lookout for a tasty snack or to make sure it wasn't a snack for someone else. Even though it was small, the Compsognathus was a big deal in its time. It lived in the late Jurassic period, around the same time as some of the giant dinosaurs like the Brachiosaurus and Stegosaurus. But unlike those giants, the Compsognathus was a nimble little creature, using its size to its advantage to zip around and stay safe. This pint-sized dinosaur shows us that you don't have to be the biggest to be one of the most interesting and successful creatures of your time. The Compsognathus was like the clever little mouse in a world of enormous elephants. So, the next time you see a small animal darting around, think of the Compsognathus and how this tiny dinosaur made a big name for itself in the vast and amazing world of the dinosaurs. What an exciting and adventurous life it must have been for this little speedster of the Jurassic world. Therizinosaurus was one of the most unique and mysterious dinosaurs that ever lived. It's like the dinosaur world's version of a superhero with long, clawed arms that would make Wolverine jealous. Picture this, Therizinosaurus was a huge dinosaur that walked on two legs, and its most striking feature was its incredibly long claws. These claws were like giant, curved knives, and they could grow up to three feet long. That's longer than your arm. Now, you might be wondering, what did Therizinosaurus do with those supersized claws? Well, here's the interesting part, instead of using them to catch prey like other meat-eating dinosaurs, it used those claws to reach up and grab leaves, plants, and branches. That's right, Therizinosaurus was a plant-eater, even though it looked like a fierce predator. Imagine Therizinosaurus using its long claws to strip leaves off tall trees or reach for tasty plants. It had a long neck to help it reach high, and it had a round belly to digest all the plant food it ate. Therizinosaurus was a gentle giant that lived in the time of the dinosaurs. Its unusual appearance and plant-eating habits make it one of the most fascinating dinosaurs to learn about. So, next time you see those long, sharp claws, remember that they belong to a friendly, leaf-eating dinosaur that roamed the ancient world. Allosaurus was one of the coolest dinosaurs that ever roamed the Earth. It lived a long, long time ago during the time of the dinosaurs and was a fearsome predator. Picture a big, meat-eating dinosaur with sharp teeth and a mouth that could open wide like a crocodile. That's what Allosaurus looked like. It walked on two powerful legs, which made it a fast runner, and it had short, strong arms with sharp claws. Allosaurus was kind of like a superhero of its time, but instead of saving the day, it hunted for its food. It probably liked to munch on plant-eating dinosaurs and other smaller creatures. It was a top predator, which means it was one of the biggest and baddest dinosaurs around. Even though Allosaurus was a mighty hunter, it wasn't as big as some of the other meat-eating dinosaurs, like Tyrannosaurus rex. But it was still a force to be reckoned with. Imagine Allosaurus stomping through ancient forests and grasslands, looking for its next meal. It had to be clever and quick to catch its prey. It was like a real-life dinosaur superhero, and its story is part of the amazing tale of Earth's prehistoric past. Learning about Allosaurus helps us understand the incredible diversity of dinosaurs and how they lived in their ancient world. It's like taking a time machine back to a time when dinosaurs ruled the land. The Diplodocus is a dinosaur that sparks the imagination of many children with its massive size and unique features. Here's a kid-friendly description. The Diplodocus was a gentle giant that lived about 150 million years ago during the late Jurassic period. It's one of the longest dinosaurs ever discovered, with a length up to about 90 feet. Most of this length came from its incredibly long tail and neck. Imagine a dinosaur as long as a basketball court. This dinosaur was a plant eater, using its long neck to reach high into trees or down to the ground for a variety of vegetation. It had a small head compared to its huge body, and its mouth was filled with peg-like teeth perfect for stripping leaves off branches. The Diplodocus had four sturdy legs that supported its massive body, 
and its tail was so long that it might have been used like a whip for defense or to make sounds. Its body might have been covered in a sort of armor for protection, with small, bony plates or spikes. One of the most interesting things about Diplodocus is that it laid eggs, despite its enormous size. Scientists have found nests and eggs that they believe belong to this gigantic dinosaur. The Diplodocus is a favorite among kids because of its impressive size and fascinating lifestyle. It often appears in books and movies about prehistoric life, captivating young minds with its remarkable appearance and characteristics. The Giganotosaurus This dinosaur was not just big, it was colossal, even bigger than the famous Tyrannosaurus rex. Imagine a creature so massive that if it stood next to your house, it could easily peek into the second floor window. The Giganotosaurus, whose name literally means, giant southern lizard, roamed the lands of what is now Argentina about 98 million years ago, during the late Cretaceous period. Now, picture this, a dinosaur as long as a school bus, with a head the size of a bathtub, filled with razor-sharp teeth as long as kitchen knives. It had powerful legs that could stride across the land, making the ground shake with each step. Its tail was long and muscular, helping it to balance and make swift turns while chasing its prey. The Giganotosaurus was a true meat-eater, a carnivorous beast. It likely hunted large plant-eating dinosaurs, using its size, strength, and speed to outmatch its prey. Imagine it thundering across the ancient plains, causing a commotion among the smaller dinosaurs as it goes in search of its next meal. What's really cool about the Giganotosaurus is that it may have been a pack hunter, like wolves today. This means that they might have worked together to take down even bigger dinosaurs, which is pretty amazing to think about a group of these giant predators coordinating their efforts for a hunt. So, next time you're imagining dinosaurs, think of the Giganotosaurus, the giant of the south, a dinosaur so immense and powerful that it remains one of the most awe-inspiring creatures that ever walked our planet. Just the thought of encountering this enormous predator on a prehistoric adventure is enough to send shivers of excitement down your spine. The Gallimimus. Its name means chicken mimic, but don't let that fool you this dinosaur was anything but chicken-hearted. Picture this, a dinosaur as tall as a basketball hoop, sprinting faster than the fastest human runner. The Gallimimus was like the cheetah of the dinosaur world, with long, slender legs perfect for high-speed chases across the open plains of what is now Mongolia, where it lived during the late Cretaceous period. Now, let's talk about its look. The Gallimimus had a small head with big, round eyes, giving it excellent vision to spot both tasty treats and lurking dangers. It didn't have big, scary teeth like some of its dinosaur cousins. Instead, it had a beak, kind of like a duck's, perfect for snapping up insects, small animals, and maybe even plants and eggs. But what really set the Gallimimus apart was its incredible speed. Scientists think it could run up to 20 miles per hour. Imagine watching a herd of Gallimimus racing across the landscape, their long tails streaming behind them for balance, like a group of Olympic sprinters. The Gallimimus also had long arms with nimble fingers, which it might have used to grab food or maybe even to communicate with other Gallimimuses. That's right these dinosaurs could have been quite social, chattering away with each other in their dinosaur language. So next time you see a bird darting quickly across the sky, or a lizard scurrying across the ground, Think of the Gallimimus, the speedy, agile, and super-smart dinosaur that once raced across the ancient world, showing us that sometimes being quick and clever is just as cool as being big and strong. Dinosaur eggs came in different shapes and sizes. Some were round like a ball, while others were more oval, like a giant chicken egg. They could be as small as a tennis ball or as big as a football. We aren't sure about all their colors since we mostly find fossils but scientists think they could have been like bird eggs maybe speckled or plain. The eggshells were not super hard like a chicken's egg but not too soft either. They needed to be strong to protect the baby dinosaur inside. Dinosaurs built nests in different places some on the ground, in the sand, or maybe even in plants. Just like birds today but way bigger. The nests could be simple holes in the ground or carefully built mounds. Imagine a big dinosaur carefully making a nest. So, dinosaur eggs and nests were pretty amazing. They show us how even these giant creatures took care of their little ones, just like animals do today. 
Isn't it exciting to think about how baby dinosaurs started their life in these ancient nests? Imagine being a dinosaur. First, you'd come into the world as a tiny baby dinosaur, just like baby animals today. You'd have to grow and get strong quickly because there were so many amazing things to do. Dinosaurs came in all shapes and sizes. Some were small, like little birds, while others were gigantic, like houses. Some walked on two legs, while others walked on four. There were plant eaters who munched on leaves and ferns, and meat eaters who hunted other dinosaurs for their meals. Dinosaurs lived in all sorts of places, from lush forests to open grasslands. They had to find food, stay safe from predators, and maybe even take care of their little dinosaur babies. Just think about the different kinds of dinosaurs you could meet, the long-necked Brachiosaurus that could reach leaves high up in trees, the speedy Velociraptor that could chase down its prey, and the enormous Tyrannosaurus Rex with its big jaws and tiny arms. But dinosaurs didn't have it easy. They faced challenges like natural disasters, changing climates, and even other dinosaurs. Sometimes, they had to be very clever to survive. And then, millions of years later, their world changed and the dinosaurs disappeared. But they left behind their fossilized bones, which scientists study to learn all about their incredible lives. So a dinosaur's life was a thrilling adventure in a world filled with wonders and challenges. Learning about them helps us understand the amazing history of our planet and the incredible creatures that once called it home. Baby herbivore dinosaurs were super cute and interesting little creatures. Herbivores are animals that eat plants, and that's exactly what these baby dinosaurs loved to munch on. When these baby dinosaurs hatched from their eggs, they were much smaller than their parents, but just like all babies, they had a lot of growing to do. Some of these babies, like the tiny Triceratops or Diplodocus hatchlings, would grow up to be some of the biggest animals to ever walk on Earth. Just imagine a little dinosaur, no bigger than your pet dog or even a cat, eventually growing up to be as big as a house or longer than a school bus. It's pretty amazing to think about. These baby dinosaurs probably spent a lot of their time eating plants to grow big and strong. They might have munched on leaves, ferns, and even fruit. Since they were herbivores, they didn't eat other animals. Instead, they helped keep the plant life in balance by eating them. Being small, these baby dinosaurs had to be careful to stay safe from predators. They might have stayed close to their parents or in groups with other babies for safety. Some, like the baby Stegosaurus, might have had some natural defenses, like tiny spikes or plates, but they still had to be cautious. Even though they were young, these baby dinosaurs were a vital part of their ecosystems. They remind us that every big, impressive dinosaur, like the huge Brachiosaurus or the mighty Ankylosaurus, once started as a tiny hatchling, taking its first steps into a vast, prehistoric world. Imagine a huge, green forest with giant trees. The ground shakes as the T-Rex walks through, searching for food. Suddenly, it spots a Triceratops. The T-Rex lets out a loud roar. It means, I'm going to eat you. The Triceratops isn't scared, it's ready to fight. It lowers its head, showing off its big horns. Crash! The T-Rex tries to bite the Triceratops, but the Triceratops is strong. It pushes back with its horns. The T-Rex snaps its huge jaws, but the Triceratops' frill is really tough. The Triceratops charges, like a rhino, trying to poke the T-Rex with its horns. The T-Rex tries to use its big teeth to grab the Triceratops. They go back and forth pushing and roaring. It's like watching a wrestling match with giant, scaly wrestlers. Who wins? Well, we don't really know for sure because this battle happened millions of years ago. But we can imagine. Maybe the T-Rex gets tired and decides to find an easier meal. Or perhaps the Triceratops bravely defends itself and the T-Rex leaves it alone. Both dinosaurs were amazing in their own ways, and their battles were like nothing we see in the animal world today. It's fun to imagine these incredible creatures and the lives they lived so many millions of years ago. Imagine a big showdown between two very different dinosaurs from a long, long time ago. On one side, you have the Velociraptor, and on the other side, the Protoceratops. It's like a scene from a movie, 
but this could have really happened millions of years ago. The Velociraptor was a small but super fast and smart dinosaur. It walked on two legs, had sharp claws on its hands and feet, and a mouth full of pointy teeth. It was a hunter that liked to sneak up on its food and surprise it. Velociraptors were about the size of a big dog, but don't let their size fool you they were tough. On the other side, we have the Protoceratops. This dinosaur was about the size of a sheep and looked a bit like a turtle mixed with a parrot. It had a big, bony frill around its neck and a strong, beak-like mouth. Protoceratops walked on four legs and was probably pretty good at defending itself. So, what would happen if they got into a fight? The Velociraptor might try to use its speed and sharp claws to attack quickly. But the Protoceratops wouldn't make it easy. It might use its frill to protect its neck and its strong beak to fight back. It's like a battle of speed and cleverness against strength and armor. Scientists think these kinds of fights might have really happened because they found fossils of a Velociraptor and a Protoceratops locked together, as if they were fighting when they got buried. We can't know for sure what these fights were like, but thinking about them helps scientists learn more about how these dinosaurs lived and behaved. It's also a fun way for us to imagine the exciting and wild world of dinosaurs. Imagine a thrilling battle between two of the most legendary sea creatures from a long, long time ago. In one corner, we have Mosasaurus, the giant marine reptile, and in the other corner, it's Megalodon, the enormous ancient shark. It's like a showdown from a movie, but it could have happened in the ancient oceans. Let's start with Mosasaurus, it was like a massive underwater lizard. This creature had a long, sleek body, powerful flippers, and sharp teeth. Mosasaurus was a skilled swimmer and a top predator in the oceans during its time. Now, meet Megalodon, it was a supersized shark, and when we say supersized, we mean really, really big. Megalodon was one of the largest sharks to ever exist even bigger than a school bus. It had rows of enormous, razor-sharp teeth that could crunch through almost anything in the ocean. In a battle between these two ancient titans, it would be quite a sight. Mosasaurus would use its speed and agility to swim around, trying to avoid those massive jaws of Megalodon. Megalodon, on the other hand, would use its size and power to try to catch Mosasaurus. But here's the interesting part, Mosasaurus and Megalodon didn't actually live at the same time in history. Mosasaurus lived during the time of the dinosaurs, while Megalodon came along much later. So, this battle is just a fun idea, like a thrilling story, because they never met in real life. But it's exciting to imagine what such a battle might have been like if these incredible creatures from the deep sea had ever crossed paths in the ancient oceans. It's a great way to learn about these amazing animals and the mysteries of our planet's history. Imagine a gigantic showdown from millions of years ago when dinosaurs roamed the Earth. In one corner, we have the Diplodocus, and in the other corner, the Gigantosaurus. It's like a scene from an epic dinosaur movie. The Diplodocus was one of the longest dinosaurs ever. It had a super long neck and tail, and it was taller than a house. Diplodocus mostly ate plants and trees, reaching high up with its long neck to grab the yummiest leaves. Even though it was big, it wasn't very fast or aggressive. It was more like a gentle giant. Now, meet the Gigantosaurus. This dinosaur was one of the largest meat-eating dinosaurs. It had a huge head with sharp, scary teeth, and it walked on two powerful legs. The Gigantosaurus was a fierce predator, hunting other dinosaurs for its dinner. So, what would happen if these two dinosaurs met? The Diplodocus, with its long neck and tail, might try to keep the Gigantosaurus away. It could swing its tail like a big whip to defend itself. The Gigantosaurus, being a hunter, might try to use its speed and powerful jaws to catch the Diplodocus. But here's an interesting thing, these two dinosaurs probably never met in real life. They lived in different times and places. Diplodocus lived in North America during the late Jurassic period, while Gigantosaurus lived in South America during the late Cretaceous period, millions of years apart. Even though a fight between Diplodocus and Gigantosaurus is just make-believe, it's fun to imagine what could have happened. It helps us think about how different dinosaurs might have acted and how they used their unique features to survive in the prehistoric world. 
About 66 million years ago, something huge happened that changed the Earth forever. It was so big that it affected everything, including the dinosaurs. Scientists believe a massive asteroid, which is like a giant rock from space, crashed into the Earth. This asteroid was so big that when it hit the Earth, it was like a billion bombs going off at once. The crash made a huge cloud of dust and ash that covered the sky. It was so thick that sunlight couldn't get through. Without sunlight, plants couldn't grow well, and the Earth became a very cold and dark place. The dinosaurs faced a lot of problems. With fewer plants around, the plant-eating dinosaurs didn't have enough to eat. And if there were fewer plant-eaters, then the meat-eating dinosaurs also had less food. Dinosaurs were used to warmer climates. The cold and darkness made it hard for them to survive. Just like dominoes falling one after the other, the problems kept adding up, making it impossible for the dinosaurs to live like they used to. So, after ruling the Earth for over 150 million years, the dinosaurs disappeared. This time is known as the end of the Mesozoic era, and it marked a big change on our planet. Even though the dinosaurs were gone, life on Earth continued. New kinds of animals and plants started to grow, and over a really, really long time, the Earth became the beautiful place it is today, full of all kinds of life, including us. The extinction of the dinosaurs is a reminder of how everything in nature is connected, and how big changes can have huge effects. But it's also a story of how life can keep going and changing, no matter what happens. Fossil dinosaurs are like pieces of a giant, ancient puzzle from a time long, long ago when dinosaurs roamed the earth. A fossil is what's left of a plant or animal that lived thousands or even millions of years ago. In the case of dinosaurs, these fossils are mostly their old bones that have turned into rock over a very, very long time. Imagine if your toy dinosaur was buried in your backyard and then, many years later, someone found it, but it wasn't plastic anymore it had turned into stone. That's kind of what happens with dinosaur fossils. When a dinosaur died, its body might have been buried by mud or sand, which protected it from the air and bugs that could make it disappear. Over time, the bones slowly changed into rock. This process is called fossilization. Scientists, called paleontologists, are like detectives. They dig in the ground and look for these rock-hard dinosaur bones. When they find them, they carefully clean and study them to learn about what dinosaurs looked like, how big they were, how they lived, and even what they ate. Sometimes, paleontologists find not just bones but also things like dinosaur footprints turned to stone, or even marks left by their skin. This helps them understand even more about these amazing creatures. So fossil dinosaurs are really special because they are the only real evidence we have to show us that these incredible creatures existed on Earth a very long time ago. They help us to learn and imagine what the world was like when dinosaurs were alive. As we wrap up our journey through the world of dinosaurs, there's one important thing we must talk about, preserving Earth's history. You see, the fossils and clues left behind by dinosaurs and other ancient creatures are like a treasure chest filled with secrets from the past. And just like real treasures, they need to be protected and taken care of. Here's why it's so important. 1. Learning from the past, fossils are like time capsules that help us learn about what life was like millions of years ago. They tell us about the animals, plants, and environments that existed long before humans walked the earth. By studying these fossils, scientists can piece together the puzzle of our planet's history. 2. Discovering new species, believe it or not, there are still many undiscovered species waiting to be found in the rocks and soil. By preserving Earth's history, we might uncover new dinosaurs or other incredible creatures that no one has ever seen before. How cool would that be? 3. Protecting the environment, Understanding how ancient ecosystems worked can teach us valuable lessons about how to take care of our environment today. By studying the past, we can learn how to protect the planet for future generations. 4. Sharing with the world, museums and science centers are like giant show and tell places where everyone can come and see Earth's history on display. When we preserve fossils and other important artifacts, we're sharing the wonders of the past with people all around the world. Five. Inspiring future scientists, you might be the next great paleontologist or scientist who makes amazing discoveries. 
By preserving Earth's history, we're giving future scientists like you the chance to learn and be inspired by the incredible world of dinosaurs. So, whether you're exploring a fossil site, visiting a museum, or simply learning about Earth's history, remember that you're a part of something big the adventure of uncovering the secrets of our planet's past. And by taking care of these treasures, you're helping to ensure that they'll be around for generations to come. Keep exploring and preserving Earth's history, because who knows what amazing discoveries lie ahead for you. Dinosaurs in popular culture are like superstars of the ancient world that have become famous all over again in our modern times. Even though dinosaurs lived millions of years ago, they are still one of the coolest and most exciting things people love to talk about, watch in movies, read about in books, and play with in toy form. In movies, dinosaurs often take center stage. Have you seen movies where dinosaurs come to life and roam around, sometimes in parks created by people? These movies use big, roaring, lifelike models or computer images of dinosaurs to make it seem like they're right here with us. It's exciting and a little scary to imagine being close to such huge creatures. Books are another place where dinosaurs pop up a lot. There are so many stories and picture books about dinosaurs. Some are fun and fictional, imagining dinosaurs having adventures or even living with people. Other books are more educational, teaching us about the different kinds of dinosaurs, what they ate, and how they lived. Toys and games about dinosaurs are super popular too. You might have seen or even played with toy dinosaurs, dinosaur puzzles, video games, or board games. These toys let us use our imagination to create our own dinosaur worlds. Dinosaurs also appear in other fun places like on t-shirts, in cartoons, and as characters in video games. They might be fierce and scary, or they could be friendly and funny, depending on the story. The reason why dinosaurs are so popular in culture is because they're mysterious and fascinating. We're curious about these giant creatures that lived on Earth so long before humans. They seem like something out of a fairy tale, but they were real, and that's what makes them so interesting and fun to learn about. Recreating dinosaurs in the present is a really cool and exciting idea that a lot of people love to think and dream about. It's like trying to bring back these huge, amazing creatures that lived on Earth millions of years ago, so we could see them in real life today. This idea is often explored in movies, books, and TV shows. The most famous idea about bringing dinosaurs back is through something called cloning. Cloning is a science where scientists make a copy of a living thing from its DNA. DNA is like a tiny instruction book that's inside every living thing and tells it how to grow and what to look like. But here's the tricky part, to clone a dinosaur, scientists would need dinosaur DNA, which is really hard to find because it's so old and usually doesn't survive for millions of years. Some stories imagine that we could find dinosaur DNA in things like mosquitoes that bit dinosaurs and then got trapped in amber, which is like fossilized tree sap. In these stories, scientists use the DNA to grow dinosaurs in labs, and then they put them in parks, almost like a zoo, so people can come and see them. It sounds like a great adventure, doesn't it? But in real life, it's not that simple. Scientists haven't found dinosaur DNA, and even if they did, there are many challenges and questions about whether or not it's a good idea to bring dinosaurs back. There are concerns about how they would fit into our world today, where they would live, and how we would take care of them. So for now, recreating dinosaurs is mostly just in the imagination and in stories. It's a fun and exciting thing to think about, though, and it lets us use our imagination to travel back in time and wonder about these incredible creatures. Plus, it helps scientists think about cool new ideas and discoveries in the world of science. Dinosaur museums and parks are like giant time machines that take us back to the age of the dinosaurs. They are special places where you can see and learn all about these amazing creatures that lived on Earth millions of years ago. In dinosaur museums, you can see real dinosaur bones that have been turned into fossils. These fossils are like the skeletons of the dinosaurs, and they are put together to show us how big and magnificent these creatures were. Sometimes, the museums have life-sized models of dinosaurs that look and sometimes even sound like the real thing. It's like standing next to a real dinosaur. At these museums, you can learn lots of cool facts about dinosaurs, what they ate, how they lived, and even what their world was like. 
There are often interactive exhibits, where you can touch things, play games, and sometimes even dig for fossils like a real dinosaur hunter. Dinosaur parks are another fun way to explore the world of dinosaurs. These parks are usually outside and have big models of dinosaurs in natural settings. You can walk around and see the dinosaurs standing among the trees and plants, almost like you're walking in a dinosaur forest. Some dinosaur parks also have play areas where you can climb on dinosaur-themed playgrounds, or even dig in sandpits to find hidden dinosaur fossils. It's a great way to have fun and use your imagination to pretend you're in the time of the dinosaurs. Both dinosaur museums and parks are amazing places to visit if you want to step back in time and discover the incredible world of dinosaurs. They are fun, educational, and a great way to see how awesome and diverse these ancient animals were. As we reach the end of our adventure through the world of dinosaurs, it's time to bid farewell to these amazing creatures that once roamed our planet. Dinosaurs were a diverse and fascinating group of animals that captured the imagination of scientists and explorers for centuries. We've learned so much about them, from their colossal size to their tiny ancestors, from their sharp teeth to their plant-loving habits. But as we say goodbye to the dinosaurs, remember that their legacy lives on in the fossils they left behind. These ancient remnants of their existence continue to teach us about Earth's history and the incredible story of life on our planet. Dinosaurs may have disappeared millions of years ago, but they have never truly left our hearts and minds. Their images grace museums, books, movies, and our imaginations, inspiring generations of scientists, artists, and dinosaur enthusiasts. As you continue your journey through the world, keep the spirit of discovery and wonder alive. Who knows what other mysteries and marvels await your exploration? Just like the intrepid paleontologists who unearthed the secrets of the past, you too can uncover the wonders of our world. So farewell, dear dinosaurs, and thank you for sharing your incredible world with us. Your legacy will continue to inspire curiosity, creativity, and a deep appreciation for the wonders of our planet.